All right, this is John Boardman joined by Andy Reynolds. Um, wanted to have a conversation today. I think it's one of those situations that, you know, we never love running into, but I think there's a ton of uh, value in this process. And it really is one of the more fulfilling things that we can help clients go through. And it's that not so pleasant, but somewhat uh, often seen situation where someone's going through a divorce. Um, and I think we've run into situations where we're introduced to a prospective client when they're, you know, come to that realization where they are going through a divorce or in the, they're in the middle of the process or maybe they recently divorced. And we get a lot of questions about how a financial planner or our firm Ballas could, could be involved um, in that situation. And, you know, thinking about those three, let's just start at the top, you know, thinking about someone who, you know, they and their spouse have, have decided that they're going to divorce. So, you know, wh how do we step in? Sure. Yeah. I think, um, you know, I think one thing people should always hope for and expect is just you know, no judgment. Like life happens, things happen. And, you know, we want to come in and be an advocate for them and, and help them through the process, which, you know, as, as we've talked about previously, there are really three phases and you know, just beginning of what do we do we, we realize it's not going the, the way as we intended or we're hoping for and we're going different directions where do we go and so what i always call that phase is just discovery like let's figure out where things are what's going on and and hold back any type of thoughts on what separation may look like let's just figure out where things are um i think an easy place for that is just listing down everything you own and annualcreditreport.com on your credit report and save all the accounts that are out there and, and just discover what all is out there. Look at incomes, look at assets, um, and start trying to figure out what assets and income structures and liabilities, what all is out there. So that's primary step number one when you're coming to meet, meet with us. Obviously, we want professionals to help you know we need probably an attorney as amicable as these can be at you you definitely you get one shot at it and when it's done it's done mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're doing it right um so bringing in attorneys you know probably represent both sides accountants as well and encircling yourself with people who can you can trust when a lot of times we've people have lost trust and you know maybe someone who they trusted the most that's right yeah i think the, the i have <clears throat> thinking back on a situation where literally two days after this individual got separated sa sitting in front of them and you know just psychologically destroyed over the situation um i remember saying you know you need to build your team you know and, the, and that team you know for this person was uh myself in that situation our firm you know as the financial planner we needed to find an attorney uh, for this person and and in the state that they were in and you know we're not we're not psychiatrists we're not psychologists I, you know it's clear that they needed to make sure that or a counselor or somebody that they could talk to because there are going to be a lot of stressful steps that these people are getting ready to go through um, and they're going to be big decisions and to your point once it's done it's done yeah. you want to make sure that you're thinking clearly um, and that, you know, you're getting the support. And I think just knowing that you have capable professionals that are on your side that can help you through the process, it's never going to be an enjoyable process, but it can definitely help your confidence as you're making those decisions along the way. Um, the attorneys often are the first calls. You know, people are looking to hire an attorney. I don't disagree with that, um, but um, you also have to be, pretty selective of the type of attorney that you're going after not all divorce attorneys are the same and their approaches can be vastly different um i think with some of our experience we can lean on can help kind of filter those and who might be a, a good fit um side note there's also a kind of an odd tactic that i've run into where some of these attorneys are actually having their the people that they know are going to uh, be their client actually go out and meet with other attorneys within the market. So they essentially right. are blocked because right. of conflict. So, I mean, the whole process can be a little muddy on the front end, but I think it's, it is just critical to get people around you that you trust and, you know, going out and interviewing professionals in the middle of this process or the beginning, I should say not fun. 
But uh, my gosh, it can make that big of a difference that you have people, you know, you know, that are that are behind you and yeah. making sure you're, and I think you're having that, good decisions. Yeah. And I think having that team, as you, you referenced, uh, is important because it all keeps everybody kind of in line and following a process and moving it forward. You don't want to rush through this, but at the same time, it does have to move forward. Um, and uh, eventually, you know, some things have to be, decisions have to be made. And having those people who you can feel are in your best interests behind you, I think this is, this is really important. So so let's just fast forward, say we've, we've worked with the person and we've figured out where all the assets are, income, you know, starting to get an idea of what the financial situation looks like starting to get an idea of what's important to them as far as you know the next steps in their future the next phase you know that, that we look at is is really beginning to see how that could could be split uh, talk a little bit about that and, and whatnot. yeah i mean i think the hardest part you know you, you think about a married couple where you would think in most cases they they kind of can see what their future is going to look like, right? And so when they when they go through this process, one of the hardest things is trying to you know reimagine what my future life would look like, and that's probably the hardest part of the process. And so when we're thinking about the finances, you know, we can't settle all the emotional issues that are being dealt with. But my gosh, if we can bottle this part up and, and make you confident about this, it's one less thing that you have to worry about. Um, it's really about trying to paint that picture of what their future life's going to look like. And so this is pre settlement. Right. So, you know, we're, we're sort of brainstorming at this point. We're, we're receiving information from um, the other side. And that's probably something we should mention. I mean, almost all cases, we're going to work with only one party um, just because, you know, there could be some potential conflicts that come with that. Um, but not always the case. You know, I mean, if it's very amicable, we've obviously dealt with that as well. But let's just say this is a situation where we deal with one side let, and we're receiving information from the other party we're not working with. Um, at that point, we can usually get a fairly good understanding of what the assets look like, what the marital assets look like specifically, and what would likely be an outcome for settlement. Now, we're not attorneys. We're not settling this. We're not a court or a judge. But we've done it enough times to know more than likely if this went all the way to court, you're going to end up in this general range. Um, and then trying to figure out what type of lifestyle, income, whatever that may be, that could create for that person. Um, and I think this is where, uh, and I would kind of let you comment on this, you know, uh, they're phenomenal attorneys, but and I think a lot of times they lean on us when it comes to kind of the different asset types, because the, whether the tax treatment, you know, all of the things that, that can complicate a person's life, they can really complicate a, a, a divorce settlement if not properly. And, there, and, you know, assets aren't all created the same. And even if it's the same tax category, it's still may come with different liabilities. It may come with different expectations, different financial continual payments. So a lot of attorneys don't want to be in that court. You know, they, they understand they can handle the document. They can handle the legal aspects of it. They can take you from A to Z. But truthfully, probably some of the better attorneys don't want to be involved with that. They'd much rather delegate that to someone like us. So, and then the other part of that is a lot, it's not just, assets you know it's some things that maybe aren't even thought about until you take a deeper dive if you look at social security mm -hmm. you know there are benefits to divorced spouses should that be considered if there aren't benefits to the divorced spouse mm -hmm. should that be considered pensions mm -hmm. you know how does a pension play into this decision um is there any money that was potentially inherited and and is was that money kept separate or was it a family asset so there's so many different aspects to that um that it, it really you have to start looking at almost the lifetime utilization of what that specific piece is and that doesn't begin to look at okay if you retain the house mm -hmm. Okay, well, your mortgage payment was X, Y, Z. You may have to go get a new mortgage because now all of a sudden your spouse doesn't want to be on that mortgage anymore. Or maybe your spouse does want to be on the mortgage. And so there's so many just convoluted pieces to it that really, you know, I don't, I don't think any one situation is, is similar to the next. And it's almost a puzzle of trying to figure out 
how these things fit into each unique category and then what's important to each person. That's right. What's important to you may not be important to me. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the house because I feel like that's usually the most emotional asset, right? I mean, and so you have one spouse that's like, I'm not, you know, maybe the kids are at home still. It's like, I'm going to, we're keeping the house. Well, most families, you know, with without two incomes um, are not able to support the same lifestyle they were accustomed to. And so now you have two households and two houses. And I've seen people get themselves in a situation where, you know, maybe it was a very valuable home. This we're talking about eight hundred thousand dollar home. They receive that in the settlement, but they don't really consider the cost of upkeeping that and that, you know, a lot of their income, you know, went to, you know, the lawn care and the cleaning and all of the things that break in a house. And, and it's just the bigger the house, the more expensive the bills tend to be and, and, and the repairs tend to be. That's an emotional thing that, you know, you, we don't ever want people to make big, quick decisions, but we also want people to face the reality of, you know, don't paint yourself into a corner where you're going to end up with you know, it feels good emotionally to have an asset, but you might be bringing on some liability with it. And the same, I think the same thing happens with, you know, oftentimes you'll see, you know, do I, let's just say it's a, a homemaker that uh, is, is divorcing. And so they, maybe they're receiving some type of a maintenance payment or, um, you know, alimony as it's right. often referenced, or it's a lump sum, you know, oftentimes they can be, um, you know, really enticed by a lump sum of money. Uh, that's where it's really important to talk to us because they may not envision maybe a million dollars or some figure like that, but they don't realize, you know, this is a amount of money that needs to sort of create an income for you. So I think it's just, you know, <laughs> not removing the emotion from it, but just sort of neutralizing the emotion in the situation as much as anything so that the clients are actually seeing like, the, these are the two paths you could go down, right? And this is what your life is going to look like. And um, if we can de-stress that as much as possible, that tends to be where we go. Yeah. And I think there's, you know, so many things that go into that and child support, if you have kids and what does that look like and college funding. And so many of these things are, when done well, can be pre-negotiated and thought through w what stinks. And I think we've seen both sides of it is, you, the, the divorce is settled and then all of a sudden some of that stuff wasn't figured out um, and it wasn't part of the agreement but yeah he or she said that help for college well now all of a sudden they're not help for college right. so that becomes a burden of one person over the other or to your comment a million dollars a million dollars is a lot of money but a million dollars can also go pretty quickly mm -hmm. especially if that's all you have that's right and they're, and they're younger and you know they've got decades potentially to, to right. support themselves right Absolutely. so there's definitely a lot to think about there. Um, so when, when we're going through this with people, I think what we want to try to do before a draft is presented to one or the other sides is we want to try to generate what that lifestyle could look like and may look like and as best we can paint the picture and try to look at everything. Yeah. And if it has to do with money, we want to try to identify that. And it should be identified really clearly um as best as you can that's right for that person and then it's just is this something we can live with um probably if done well both parties leave feeling like they got the raw deal um but that's exactly right. and i've heard a mediator say that yeah you know if this goes well everyone feels like they lost yeah you know yeah yeah and those two halves typically don't feel like they combine to a whole but that's just the reality of any negotiation like that so right. and we've seen situations that have started amicable and then they end up not so amicable um just through the process i mean and the yeah. attorneys are doing their job right they're representing their parties but that can escalate the contentiousness of these situations and um people that think the process might take you know three months it ends up taking two years because there's certain things and you know we don't hold ourselves out as mediators or attorneys, but I think sometimes just, you know, s talking about the reality of the situation and what's likely, I think people just sometimes need a little bit of a reality check of, you know, what that eventual financial picture may look like. It's always tricky when there's things that are hard to value, you know, right. businesses particularly, um, or, um, you know, individuals that had huge income years and maybe lesser income years. I mean, there's just a lot of complication that, um, uh, for lack of a better term, it's kind of red meat for attorneys that they'll go after. And, but that can create a lot of contentiousness as well. And so that's why I think just 
this is not intended to sell our services, but I think it's just to show like the value of having a planner involved yeah. is that, you know, let's, let's get, let's not talk about the, the, the fight. Let's just actually talk about, you know, what these numbers are, are telling us. And, um, and, and but I'll say one more thing, but you know, when it comes to business, you know, just relying on the professionals, I've actually seen some people kind of fast track divorces. And I look back on those, um, they've come to us after the divorce is over and it just doesn't make a great deal of sense of like how it ended up like that for them. Um, so don't feel compelled to make it a fast process. Make sure it's a thorough process because to your earlier point, which is a good one, you've got to assume once it's done, it's done. Right. It is very, very challenging to go back um, and have that relitigated. It happens, but it's horribly expensive yeah. to have that done. Yeah. And I think, you know, to, to the comment you're making before that, if we can figure, if we can paint a picture of, okay, if we, if we go down at this path, this is what it looks like. What that creates is comfort for people in that maybe now they felt like they, maybe the attorney is identifying, well, here are three areas where you could be more aggressive on, but we can take a step back and we say, yeah, but life looks okay. You know, here, here's the path you're on. It's going to work out financially. We don't have to keep fighting over this 5% piece that we can't figure out. Like, let's, let's just, you know, move on or the opposite of we need that 5%. That's like that. We, we have to have that happen for you to accomplish your goals. And, and then you can, well, sometimes too, it just kind of like, it's, it's something that is such a stress point in the, in the negotiation. And to your point, maybe it's not financially as significant as it maybe is emotionally significant. Right. But it might save them a year or two years of stress by just like putting this part behind to say, I'm okay partying with that. But as long as I'm, I'm taken care of, you know, I think that that's one thing that I being able to see the life cycle of what that individual is going to go through. I think that's really our job, yeah. you know, when we're sitting out with clients. And so we, when we look at assets, we're looking at it very different than an attorney may look at it because they're just looking at this is the division of assets. Right. It's half and half. And I think the very I would say the most efficient settlements I've seen, you know, look a little different than that. You know, one type of asset tends to be more beneficial to one side versus another asset, more beneficial to the other. It's sort of thinking through like, I know today you could split these things half each, but maybe you get all of this and, and I get all of this because that helps you and this helps me. And I think those are because we're looking 10, 20, 30 years down the road and why that asset might be actually more beneficial in one individual's, you know, hands or another. Yeah. So, yeah, no, definitely. Let's talk about, you know, we, we get these calls. Um, someone just went through a divorce, you know, divorce attorney calls us and says, I've got someone, you know, prospective client, you know, they're trying to put their financial life together. Um, talk about that process a little bit and kind of how that conversation would go. Yeah. So definitely easier to be more impactful the earlier we get involved right like like with anything no so many times we get involved after a transaction happened they're like oh yeah here's where i'm at mm-hmm. and so the earlier we get involved the better but let's just say we get that phone call you know the biggest thing is getting stuff done um you just went through this a big emotional ordeal it's finally behind you you sign the documents most people that i've come across uh, it feels like they're ready to move on like they're ready to put the past in the past, kind of two sides, or or they're not ready at all. But most people are kind of ready to move on at this point. Sign the document, ready to go. Um, the problem is there's still a lot of things to do. Um, and a lot of people want to be done with it. They don't want to keep doing these things. And they're kind of like, it's like adulting, you know, that they, <laughs> they, they, they know they need to do these things, but they just, they're emotionally drained. Um, they spent so much time already. So, a lot of where we've stepped in is helping to keep the process moving just because it's done doesn't mean everything's done. You know, I'm thinking of one situation we went through. It took, gosh, almost a year to split the assets. We had to go to the custodian three different times with three different valuations. Um, we didn't get signatures. It took, you know, I think that the quadro was good for 30 days. It went past 30 days. We had to go redraft the document. So, Part of it's just keeping the momentum going. Um, they don't want to call the attorney. They pay big attorney bills, mm-hmm. and so they, they just want to move on. So a big part of it is keeping things going. Another big part of it is, again, we, we thought life would look like this. 
maybe this is a new person. We don't know what life look like looks like. It's just really starting back of, you know, examining what's important to you. Where does life go? Um, you know, it's, it's really kind of starting from the, the basics all over again, which I think also for some people can be exciting. Yeah. You know, this usually this wasn't a fun past several years. It can be an exciting time as well. That's right. I mean, it is a, just a collision of a lot of emotions um, and it feels overwhelming the number of decisions that have to be made. I remember telling a, a client, I said, we got to hurry up and slow down at the same time. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, we got to hurry up and get all the logistics handled when this, is, you know, now that it's settled, you know, we got to make sure the house is properly deeded and that, you know, you've closed the joint accounts and you've checked your credit report to make sure you don't have any joint credit outstanding. But we're, then we're going to slow down because what I don't want you doing is feeling like you have to be in a rush to make these really big decisions. I mean, how many people have you sat down with after they've gone through any financial transition right. in their life where they're like, I got to sell the house, I'm going to change jobs, I'm going to move, I'm going to get remarried, whatever it may be. It's, you know, there is just a, there's a healthy process of being a little more patient because I think that's just a natural human instinct to feel like, okay, now I'm in control. I've got to make a bunch of decisions. And I think that, Sometimes the very best decision is to do nothing for a little bit and just let it settle, think it through. Um, I remember this was not a divorce, but this was a client that lost their spouse. I mean, two weeks later, she called me and said, you know, I need to sell the house. I can't afford it. And I said, let's just calm down. Everything looks good financially. You're able to afford it. Met with her five years later. And she was like, I cannot believe I wanted to sell this house. Right. But it was natural at the time because she was just felt like it was just too much for her to handle. And that's just because there's just so much, um, you know, that that it's just, again, a natural instinct to feel like this is the time I have to take control. Yeah. And people are trying to recreate. I mean, we're not psychiatrists, psychologists, (laughs) but we do play that role a lot, uh, ironically. But people are trying to recreate what that, you know, you mentioned earlier, you have this path, you think you're going down this path and people are trying to recreate what that path may be and their brains are trying to go somewhere. And they may not be in the right mindset to figure out what that somewhere looks like, but they're grasping for that somewhere. That's exactly because they need it. Mm -hmm. And rightfully so. I get it. Um, So hitting the pause button, keeping things moving forward from the blocking and tackling, um, I I think is the best part at that point. Similar story. We we had a person, friend of ours, taxable account. Taxable account took three years to get divided to the spouse, ex-spouse. Ex-spouse who had the taxable account then went and asked the sued, the uh, other spouse, for the tax gains to help the, with the tax payments over those three years. So, just keeping it moving and and being quick to follow the step. Absolutely. But slow to make big life changing yeah. decisions. Yeah, people can get kind of burned out in the process. It's natural that they would kind of let the logistics. And I... Some attorneys are better than others when it comes to following through on these logistics. Um, but I think that's kind of where we can take the ball and run with it a little bit. And it's just making sure that all of those little thing, beneficiary changes, you know, something people rarely talk right. about. But how how long ago at their employer did they put their spouse down as their primary beneficiary? Well, that supersedes just about every document out yep. there, even your will. So you got to make sure you get those updated to the proper people. Um any number of things in your estate plan, if you have a will, I mean, you got to make sure that those things can still exist uh, past your divorce. And so it's important just to make sure that, you know, you just a lot of logistical things. Then, And I think that's just like just that's why relying on your professional team that you have around you is, is makes the biggest difference in the yeah. world. Life insurance. One of the last things you think about. You yeah. Know, make sure you get that done. Yeah. And then the life insurance, too. You know, one thing you're kind of going back to, you know, the settlement the step two is that, gosh, I mean, let's just say you have a, a individual who is going to receive some amount of income from their spouse. Um, what were ha- what would happen if if that person passed away? And so making sure they're protected. I mean, there's just a lot of little nuanced planning techniques that are not difficult, but they can really make a huge difference at the end. And it's just somebody that can sort of think through the process thoroughly with you. Definitely. For sure. Definitely. So if we had to conclude, you know, again, three major process, three major parts, kind of 
figuring it all out, trying to, to do the discovery of what all is out there, pre-planning, post-planning. What would you say if someone is beginning this process, thinking about this process, what are some key takeaways kind of high level that you'd want to make sure everyone's thinking through as they go through that? Yeah. I mean, the hardest part is, you know, some people are shell-shocked at the, at the beginning of the process or all the way through, but let's just say you're at the beginning of the process. The team, the professional team around you is, is critical. And don't necessarily go with the first person that you meet with. I think, you know, if, if you met with someone like us, we would often encourage you. If you're still thinking this through, meet with other people, you know, see who's a good fit for you because, you know, it, th- you're, these are going to be, be the people that you need to rely on in your toughest moments to give you the best advice for the rest of your life that are going to set you up for the rest of your life. So it's an important decision on, on who you hire on the front end. Um, and I would also say, um, you know, gathering your personal affairs a little bit and sort of getting your arms around it. I mean, I think our clients would feel pretty confident they have a good grip of their financial picture. But I think a lot of people walking around really don't know what they have in their retirement account or what their future pension is going to be or what their benefits look like. It's just good to gather that information. And I think so the attorney is going to request certain things, but some of these little details I think can make a huge difference. Those are some of the things that I think we focus on. Um, and then I think just expectations, you know, having a healthy expectation of that this is going to take some time. I think that it tends to be the most frustrating thing that I see in people is that everyone wants the process to be over yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, it's a sluggish process, unfortunately. And the more complicated the asset mixes of the household, the longer the process is probably going to take. And if it's contentious, it may take even longer. Yeah. So I think so just setting expectations on the on the front end is the most important thing you can do. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, I think as we think through this, there's there's a lot here. There's a lot of different components of it. Kind of going back to your comment, build a team, build a team you can trust. And, you know, it's an emotional time. It's a time where you're here worn out on a lot of feelings. So get people around you, go to that person, that next person in your life who you trust the most, have, bring them with you, you know, build a team that you can trust and, and likelihood of you having a better outcome is higher. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you.